Okay, it is Friday, 9.23 a.m., July 16th, and this is the main watch list, DPLS. I'm going to be watching for any kind of spike, maybe even a run past this 20 level, who knows, or maybe it's going to do a morning panic. If there's a kind of, if there's a nice setup and it looks clean, I might consider trading it. DRNG, I'd like to see the spike today. I'm not going to consider this for a dip buy because of the fact that it just had this ugly day yesterday so that's not really that nice GMER looks like it might potentially do a panic today if it does it I might consider that for a setup INCC maybe a follow up spike would be nice I'm not too sure what's gonna happen with this one it's just gonna be a watch I might consider it again if it does like a nice morning spike right I might consider it LCLP, I don't really want to do any kind of trading with this. It could be a morning panic bounce play, but I'd rather see this one spike today as well. So really, LCLP, INCC, I'd rather see these things spike. Although INCC could be a panic that I could try. Gamer would be a panic, ideally. DRNG a spike as well. DPLS can do either one, so that's where I'm at at the moment. All right, it is 9:37. Unfortunately, not really any setups I would be interested in trading. DPLS could bottom here, but VWAP is very close. There isn't much range in this setup. Gamer is um, just being itself. INCC is having a spike, but it was all choppy in the morning. I'll be watching this for uh, a setup potentially. LCLP. Maybe I'll consider it for a dip towards VWAP if it does that. DRNG did offer that. I just hesitated because I don't really like the way it is on the daily chart. It lasted for a little bit. It could have gone in at 44. It got to 49. That was it. As for morning panic bounce place, I considered MWWC, but I don't like the way it turned around. It was only down for two minutes, two red candles, and that was it. So I kind of missed it for that reason. Maybe it should have been less picky, but... You know, it just it just wasn't that nice in that sense, and it didn't didn't trade that much volume. But but that's all right. I'll keep looking. No, no morning panic bounce plays that were really good, unless you want to count this. But this wasn't really the best. Okay, it is 10:07 a.m. and I am here to make an update on a very speculative trade I took. I didn't think it was gonna be. Um, this was my first loss in like forever. Um, I don't like the percent gain it was a five percent but I did trade a small position I was considering trading even smaller 50,000 shares at the time which would have made it very um, very small but I did not do that let me just see how much it was had I have taken a 50,000 shares at so um, I guess at the time it was 43 yeah that would have been a $200 position I probably should have stuck with that smaller size position because I knew this wasn't perfect so the idea was is that you know yesterday I had that big percent gain, 300 percent up at the end of the day, and uh, so today I was looking at it, had this panic right, and I thought, okay, well maybe this is the big volume candle, maybe I'll consider a trade. It's not perfect. It seems to drop very easily with just a small amount of volume, which was a little cautious something I had to be cautious about and um, I took a trade at 958 which was right here um, somewhat after the big volume candle at 56 I got in at 43 and I didn't like the price action um, you know I thought it would turn around rather quickly it wasn't doing it so I cut it at 41 at 959 sure I could have sold at 48 or you know somewhere positive or break even but I don't mind that sell because you know this was like a level a tiny level of support at the time and when it cracked and got the 40 I said nope I don't want to be a part of this this is what happened I did not want to be a part of this where it cracked 40 it has a big drop to 35 imagine buying at 43 selling at 35 that's a terrible that's a terrible percent loss so I didn't want to be a part of that sure it turned around um, and I could have sold for a profit but I don't mind the fact that I cut the trade. I think I did well in terms of trading it. I don't think I picked a good setup. I was probably just a bit salty because, you know, there weren't any morning panic bounce plays that I liked. And it's just these, uh, like these creepy stocks that I don't really trade. 
that nicely to um, at least for me you know I bet other people like the way they trade but not but not I mean I won't trade this anymore unless it does like an inverse head and shoulders but I probably won't consider it anymore it was a good speculative trade it was 23 but it's I, I don't feel too bad it was a good try I didn't think it was going to be that much in terms of a uh, percent loss um, in that case I probably would have tried to have gone for break even or maybe 42 but that that is what it is you know this thing can do whatever it wants DPLS trash DRNG um, trash I mean it did turn around here with a big volume candle kind of like what I was thinking about with INCC it did have a nice in theory range towards VWAP it just didn't do it maybe it'll try doing it here but if it's gonna be choppy it can do whatever it wants I won't be a part of it anymore but this one did do that thing but I just don't like the way it looks right there on the daily chart it looks like trash LCLP I guess it did it here too I guess it just happened to pick the one that didn't do the thing I wanted it to do but that's alright SVES oh wow this one actually is doing it 42 I briefly put a, a market uh, not a market a buy order at the bid not the ask at the bid at 10.05 right here at uh, you know 39 I could have been executed in theory but you know maybe here too when it dropped to the right there. I don't know how low yeah it dropped to 38 I think right there it dropped to 38 so I could have been executed here it's doing it it's at 42 uh, this was a dip towards VWAP setup and then we had that big volume candle not too what the heck all right big volume candle not too long ago but I didn't take it because there was like it was like this it had a six thousand six million share seller and then it had another large person and then the bid was looking very thin so I wasn't too sure if it was gonna work or not somebody bought a lot of shares of this so yeah that's where I'm at there's really no setups that I want there's nothing that I want to trade everything looks kind of nasty it's I don't like any of these setups that have only been up one or two days. Sure, it's been up a lot in terms of percentage, but you know, none of, none of the ideal ones. HPIO, um, sure, it turned around, but well, this isn't a morning panic bounce play that I want to trade. I want something very sharp and vertical. This wasn't it. PHIO looks like trash too. So yeah, just a lot of. Um, you know setups that I don't like in theory it did kind of work out because you know it turned around and it got the 48 but it didn't last very long um, I probably shouldn't have traded it in the first place but I don't mind my sell here at 41 even though I could have sold for a profit because had it have broken because it did you know take some you know hits at the 40 support level if that would have broken here and I was trying to sell for break even or a small profit you know trying to just wiggle a few you know sneaky trades out there just trying to get executed for a little more or break even that would have been bad because again this is when they broke it and I did not want to be a part of something like that so that's what I got from right now maybe I don't I don't think I'll trade anything today unless like DPLS does a tsunami panic but I don't see anything that I want to trade so uh, that's where I'm at um, nothing nothing in mind right now all right apologies for any um, background noise um, visitors are over for a little bit <sighs> dude I just made one dollar from this trade DPLS <laughs> I didn't think I was gonna make that little <laughs> all right so what was the idea just a big random colossal drop I think somebody just had a lot of shares to sell and they had a really low um, you know sell price you know just to see if, if they could get all their shares maybe they got all their shares maybe they didn't so we had that panic and I thought alright well maybe it's gonna uptrend and try to get back to where it was because I don't think this was really expected it just I, I don't know if there were promoters behind this and somebody just dumps a lot of shares like that I think they're gonna try to find you know a way to bring it back to where it was or at least um, try so 
I bought at 1104 which was a horrible entry right I mean not that bad at the ask at least but then we had this dip right to 1527 1530 and it just slowly started to grind up so you know I was waiting there I held the trade for six minutes and I thought you know what let me just take a sell at 45 it's kind of taking a long time you know I don't want to be in trouble or anything like that I'm gonna guess this thing can have the 16 but that's the thing with DPLS it just doesn't have much range but it's still doing it I sold at um, 11 10 at 45 which was right here right there I got you know near the top I mean I did get the 48 if you look at that wick right here 48 maybe 49 you know it could still do it. it doesn't look bad it's just gonna just slowly uptrend if it wasn't a promoter who just sold all those shares um if it was maybe uh you know maybe this is their intention and they're gonna just soak up a bunch of their buyers and then bring it down but um that's 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 just what i think really not the best setup but i still took it it could have been worse i did trade a small position size like three hundred dollars give or take was my size so it's not like I traded with a lot INCC ke keeps downtrending this was my trade right here um, I bought somewhere here and I sold at 41 could have sold for a profit sure but I shouldn't have traded this this was a bad setup I was just salty because I didn't get any morning panic bounce places um, I'll make an update later with DPLS DRNG doesn't look nice I'll remove this one it looks like you know daily chart looks like trash I you know, I'll be surprised if it turns around. SPES was that dip towards VWAP. It did make a move. That was about it. LCLP. I haven't seen this in a while. It looks like it's up training and it's cracking. Um, yeah, cracking this level at, the, excuse me, 32, not a 35. Um, but I didn't see this, but maybe I would have considered it. Maybe. I don't know. This is sketchy sketchy candles you know so that's where I'm at probably gonna remove INCC too it's just no setups at least the kind that I like trading you know I don't I don't see anything nice so I'm just gonna call it off here I'll make an update later in the day all right it is 534 and I am here to call it off overall down like uh, $13 something $8 gain Puny one dollar sixty five six. Wow, one dollar sixty five cents and <laughs> negative twenty three. Now, this one I should have been uh, more careful. Uh, great lesson learned. Sub penny stocks, the range is a lot more than what you think it is. You know, like you think about it point zero zero one to point zero zero two. That's a that's a double and you don't think it's much because oh, it's just a little tiny amount nope that's a double INCC was that first trade and that was back here let me get rid of extended hours so it's readable I got it at 958 right yep that was right here got in and out sure it did spike I don't regret it too much sure I could have held but I didn't want to be a part of again I don't want to be a part of this panic that it had there under 40 so great lesson there just you know, be extra careful with sub pennies, really. Just to just to be very careful. SBES was a sub penny setup that worked, but I did not trade it. Um, I could have run executed, but I was just worried about it because it wasn't trading much volume, as you can tell. It really died off towards the end of the day, and um, you know, it, it still worked right here. Ten oh five. I had a. Order at the bid, 39 cents. I could have gotten executed. It did get to, what, 43, so not that much range, but no, it's, not, it's actually not bad, but give or take 10%. It's just not too ideal because it doesn't trade much volume. All right, sorry about that delay. Um, Well, with my magic editing, there was no delay, but DPLS is the next one, and that was a buy back at 11.04 which was first yeah this dip right here so I had this drop some big seller maybe had a bunch of sales I thought okay maybe the promoters will try to push it back or something actually it did not happen now it did make a little move from if you want to be perfect 15.27 give or take 15.50 so there isn't really 
you know, a lot of range here, but it, it didn't just fall off a cliff immediately. It did work just a tiny bit. Not really the best setup. Anyway, uh, 1537, 1104 was right here. And I sold at 1110 right near the highs at 1545. So that was not a bad sell at all didn't get much higher that was a good sell just it didn't seem like you know it was gonna come back I expected it to do a lot better you know volume was fading here a lot but it just wasn't really uptrending never got to that VWAP goal give or take um, you know when it comes to something like this I wouldn't really expect to get V I wouldn't expect you to get the VWAP but maybe just a little lower like down here at 1598 but I guess that wasn't really the best setup. They had another drop, it seems like. Big volume candle here. And uh, that was a little more volatility. And the last trade, which I did not go over until now, was done in the garage while I was um, where, you know, on my main thing and I was fulfilling orders. Unfortunately, I had to cut this one short because the mailman was driving by and I had to um, basically get all the packages and put it in the mailbox before he'd get to my place so I had to cut this trade early and it did run a little more from where I bought um, it, well not from where I bought but from where I sold but I wasn't able to hold it as long as I would have liked to so what was the story I was watching it right about here all this time here I missed it right because I thought okay it's gonna break out this level it did and then I thought it's gonna dip under it kind of put up higher lows I was hesitating pretty badly really badly really badly and then on my laptop right I hope I don't destroy it it's like this it's kind of hard to look at so what could be a large move doesn't seem that large because of the laptop screen but that's all right um, just good experience just watching it I guess but I should have considered it like when it was down here at 38 um, I could have really considered it for like just a continuation risking off the same exact level because that was give or take the highs right here just a confirmed breakout setup so when did I buy I bought at 45 because that's when it started to really get crazy right right about here so I knew uh, okay maybe I didn't get in at the 38 37 level I should have been in but let's see you know let's be cautious let's get in right when it looks like it's about to go crazy so I did that um, again I got in at 45 which was right here sorry about that right click that was 437 so I got in at 437 right about there right here at 45 and it did get crazy right and then I got to 44 5 which is when I sold clearly got a lot higher got to 46 <sighs> again um, I'm not upset because I had to leave and drop off the packages you know that was why I cut it early otherwise I would have held this one longer now where would I have stopped I don't know maybe here when it started to turn red at 452 just to play it safe but I, I really don't know where I would have sold in that sense so that was a trade there and I did look at it from here I, I even considered this potential inverse second um, inverse head and shoulder second higher low shoulder head shoulder inverse head and shoulders and then here but then I thought you know this thing isn't actually really ideal because it was supposed to be a higher low and this is more of a double bottom I was watching it and yeah it just ripped through you know, it did offer, I guess, some tiny, well, they're not really tiny. This thing trades with a lot of range. It's like a 10% move here, right, from 36 to 40. Yeah, so it offers range, although it doesn't seem like it. And, uh, yeah, I'm just, after that, it was pretty much done. I mean, the, the market's close. INCC, again, just absolute trash. I, I regret taking that trade because it was only up one day. The price action was not looking nice. It didn't really spike that much. You know, ideally some of these have, you know, a, a large day like it did here. And then the next uh, the next day immediately has a morning panic. And that 
was not the case here. I shouldn't have traded that. I regret that. DPLS wasn't too bad. It was speculative. SBES. I should have taken the trade, but I don't regret it because there were some large sellers on the ask. And the volume was very low, but hey, it did work out there, so not that bad. LCLP, I don't regret my trade there, but I should have tried to push myself to get in there. I'll give myself some slack because I was on my laptop. So that's all I got. Um, three trades. You know, I, I just I just gotta be more careful with these low priced sub penny stocks because the range, you know, it doesn't seem like much. Oh, okay, you know, so that bought at 43, sold at 41. 5% so I gotta be careful with those sub pennies not should not have traded this one at all should have traded SBES I don't regret DPLS it was speculative again and LCLP should have been a part of it when it was back here breaking the day high you know got under it kind of putting up higher lows I should have been in here that would have been super ideal you know I would have been super happy if I took a buy at 38 something and then you know, selling to this 43.6 because it started to look exponential. That's all I got. I'm going to call it off again. I'm not going to beat myself up too much, but I, I, I can definitely get a lot better.